Hi, welcome to the Xylem Virtual Training Series. I'm David Stover, Technical Training Manager for Xylem Industrial Solutions. Today we're going to be talking about the ESVI. Now the ESVI is an immersible pump where we can see right here where our pump is down located below the surface of a tank and it pumps fluid up and out for machine tool applications. And for today's application, we're going to do a mechanical seal replacement inside the pump here. Now we'll be following all of our instructions that's inside of our installation and operation manual. Now you can find a copy of this manual at Goulds.com. You go to Goulds.com and in the search bar, type in ESVI and it'll take you to the product page for the ESVI product. There you'll be able to find your brochure on the product along with the installation and operation manual and that'll show you all the information of how we're going to be operating today. We're going to start with the disassembly of our pump right here. We're going to take off our coupling guard right here. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure that we've got our safety gloves on so that we don't get any cuts. Additionally with this we want to make sure that we have the power turned off to the pump if the pump is in service. We want to lock out the power, make sure that it can't be turned back on once we get to, into the pump and start working with it. And we also want to make sure that we don't have any pressure on the system. Relieve any pressure before we take the pump apart so that we don't have anything that comes out on top of us. So with that, let's go ahead and start with our coupling guard right here. We've got two screws on the front side here. And there's another coupling guard exactly like this on the back side that we'll remove. It's exactly the same with the same setup with screws right here. So we'll take these screws out. And get the screw on the opposite side. And then we can remove our coupling guard. Now here we'll see our coupling on the inside. We're going to go to the back side and remove our coupling guard back here. So now we've got our coupling guard off front and back. And this exposes our pump shaft coupling right here. So the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to remove our coupling bolts. And we've got two on the bottom and we have two on the top that we're going to take out. And we'll reach in here and we'll loosen them up with the Allen wrench. Now if they're tight, you may end up having to go back in and utilize a ratchet that you can reach in there and break that loose and then take it out by hand. So we'll stick this in, holding the coupling in place and break that lock. Now we've got one on the bottom that faces forward and one on the top that faces the opposite corner forward. We break that loose, spin our coupling around and break the opposite side loose there the same way. We'll take the bottom corner, break it loose, the top corner we can break it loose. Once we've got this broke loose, we can then go to our T-handle wrench here, spin this out quickly and easily. We get the first one loose. Let's save our bolt to the side. Go to the top opposite corner, take it loose. Set our bolt to the side, turn the coupling, get the opposite two, and then our final bolt will take loose here. With our bolts out, our coupling then separates. We have front and back. We'll set this to the side. And then we also have a drive pin located right here on the shaft. We want to take this out and preserve it also with the coupling. 
Okay, so now once that we've removed the coupling, the next step we have to do is remove the motor itself in order to replace the cartridge seal. Now we break our motor bolts loose. Motor bolts are tight. You can take a wrench, break these loose, and get these to come out. And we'll take all of our motor bolts out. So we've got to get these loose. And once we get these out, we can remove the motor itself because we have to remove the motor on the cartridge seal. The cartridge seal is much longer than the standard seal that we used before. Let's break these. So we've got four motor bolts on here. We've got two in the front, two in the back. We'll take the back bolts loose and get these out of the way. And then we can remove our motor. Okay, now that the motor bolts are out, we're going to take our motor, lift our motor off carefully, take this up, set this to the side so that it doesn't go anywhere. Now we can, we've exposed our seal chamber down here at the bottom. We can get to it a lot easier and get our seal out. So now we're going to, re we're removing the seal plate. We have to break these screws loose right here and we're going to use these to push the seal plate out. Now before we can take it all the way loose, we have three smaller Allen set screws right here. We've got to break these loose because these are what's locking the seal to the shaft. So we just want to loosen them up. We don't have to take them all the way out. And we'll get these loose. And then it will slide off the shaft with the jacking screws. Get these loosened like so. And that should be good. And now we'll finish up with our screws here. Let's take these out. So once we get our screws taken loose, we're going to move these screws to a hole right here and another hole right here. Now these will thread right into these holes and it'll push down against this plate right here. So I'm going to come in from the top. I'm going to set my screw in position, and this is going to tighten up just like this. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other screw over here. I'm going to take this one out, and we're going to move it to that other screw hole. Now we'll notice that these are directly opposite of each other, while the ones that hold the seal in position are actually in a triangular pattern. There's three screws. So it's the two that goes directly across from each other. And these thread in just like this. And we can see that go in. And as it goes down against that bottom plate, we'll see it starts to lift that seal off of that shaft. Now we want to go evenly with this because if we run one screw down all the way and we don't do the same with the other side it's going to cause it to bind it's going to make this this plate right here lift on one side but not on the other so we've got to do it equally on both sides and these will tighten up and that's going to lift my seal up and help us to get it out of the assembly Okay, so now we run, we've got our set screws here run all the way down, and it has lifted the plate. At this point here, we're going to take two screwdrivers, and we're going to reach in. We're going to place them right under, right here on the lip on both the front and the back, and just slightly pry upwards, and we'll see the seal assembly lift right out. So we'll move these out. Now we can lift our seal assembly all the way out and we've now removed the old mechanical seal cartridge. We'll take our screws off here because we're not going to use these on this, this seal. We'll put a new seal in. Let's take these out, set them to the side. We've got our new seal cartridge. This will come in a protective wrapping. We'll take this out. We're going to inspect our seal, make sure everything is in good condition. 
Now what we're looking for is we're looking at this O-ring right here around this area. We're going to spec that, take a look at it, make sure that it doesn't have any nicks or cuts or pinch marks on there. We're going to look on the inside right here too because we have a small O-ring right here inside. We're going to take a look at that, make sure that that looks clean and there's no issues with it. So our seal looks like it's in good shape. Now you'll notice that we don't have the, the, the surfaces or the, the seal faces open. So this right here is a lot easier to work with when we start to install this. We don't have to worry about uh, messing up the seal face like we might on a traditional mechanical seal. Now before we put the seal on, we want to inspect our shaft. Make sure that the shaft is clean. We don't see any burrs. We don't see any rust or any other material in here on our shaft. So we're going to take this and look at it, clean it, inspect it. If we see anything on there, maybe we'll take a little piece of emery cloth and brush that and clean it up. So this looks like it's in good shape. Now we're going to use a little bit of, of our lubricant, our P80 lubricant that we use here. I'm going to put a little bit on this O-ring right here just so that it'll slide down into the seal housing on the top of the pump. Now we'll slide that into there, put a little bit there. Put a little bit on our O-ring in here too because again we got we got a dry seal in here on a dry shaft. We're going to bring this in from the top, set this right here, and gently push it downward onto our shaft. That slides in. We're going to go all the way down. We're going to line up our holes right here. This is our holes that's going to lock our seal plate down into position. So we get these started. We want to run them down evenly all the way around. We don't want to run one side all the way down while the others are still loose. Now, Remember whenever we took the other seal out that we had the set screws that locked the seal to the shaft. Now we're not going to set those until we set the shaft height. Remember those set screws were right here, these set screws here. We'll set these on the new seal once we get this adjusted with our coupling. Now we'll tighten them up, do it in a star pattern, go back and forth across the three, bringing it down evenly. So we've got our, tight, our screws tightened up. Our seal is now locked down into position. The next step that we've got to do is we're going to put our motor back on. We're going to set our motor and then we're going to set our coupling on and then from that we have to set our shaft height. Remember, we haven't set these screws, these tiny set screws on this locking collar yet. So we pick our motor up, we're going to take our motor, set it down on the top of the pump. Now here we have to line up our motor bolt holes. So we put our motor, motor bolts back in. Now we've got our motor mounted, we've got this in place and we've tightened all of our bolts back down. Remember, we've got a drive screw or pin that goes in our pump shaft right here, where it's just going to set right there for the moment. And we also have, remember our setting tool. This is what sets our shaft height. Remember, this was connected to the side of the pump over here. We're going to take that, we set it in right here, right down at the bottom. And our coupling is going to set down against this. So we take our pump coupling like this, and we'll see that we have a hole and that's where that pin goes in, right here. We'll remove this, we'll set that shaft height. Let's get our pin in position. Get this in. Take the other side, we're gonna set it in the same way. When we get it all locked in. There we go. Right there. Now, we'll see they're together. Now we're going to take our screws that we used to hold this together and we're just going to set them in place and get them to hold the coupling 
together at this point right now, okay? I'm going to start the nut on this. Now the back side of this coupling is kind of hexed out so that nut slides back up in there and holds it so I don't have to have a wrench on the back side. I'm going to take my Allen wrench here. I'm just going to spin it down till it just touches. And when I tighten these up in final, I've got to make sure that this gap right here is the same on both sides right here too, okay? I want it to be close. I mean, we're not, we're not, we don't have to use like a, a gauge or a, a mic or anything like that, but we just want it, you know, really close so that it's not closed all the way up on one side and, you know, wide open on the other. You do that, what ends up happening is you get your coupling is out of balance and it will cause vibration. So, all right, so we snug this up. I'm checking my gap. I'm a little bit wider on this side. Let's see if I can close this down just a little bit. Now, I don't want it tight. I just want it kind of locked into place because I still got to lift this shaft up. Get that. That's closer. That looks a lot better. Okay, now I've got two more, two more screws to put in. You'll notice that two go in from this side and the other two go in from the other opposite side. And they're on opposite corners too. So we get the nuts started on here. So we get our shaft up. We're going to take it and set our setting guide right here. Now we've got that underneath the bottom. I'm at this point, I'm going to take my small Allen wrench. This is for my set screws that I had here, we're going to take these and set these to the shaft at this point right now. So now we've got our spacer on the bottom of our coupling right here. We want to put this in. It's going to set our, our coupling at the right height. We get this into position. We're going to tighten it up. And as I said before, we want to make sure that we've got our gap between the sides here the same, but they also have to be the same top to bottom so that we don't have a, a triangular shaped hole or something in there as we go. So we're going to tighten it up front and back, top and bottom. Make sure that we get this the same all the way around. And this is what's going to lock into position. We're going to set our shaft up on our motor. Tighten this back down. And then I'm also going to set my screw using my small Allen wrench. I'm going to set the locking ring around the bottom of the shaft or the seal. Run that in. Tighten that up. Now at this point, I'm going to remove my spacer right here. The spacer's out. I've got my set shaft set at the proper height. I'm going to tighten up the rest of my set screws on my Seal, locking ring right here. They're in position. I'm going to double check my coupling bolts, make sure that they're good and tight. My bolts are good, my coupling's good. Check rotation, my pump spins freely. We've replaced our mechanical cartridge seal for our pump. The final step, always want to make sure that we put our coupling guards back on for safety. It's going to go here. We're going to use our two set screws right there to lock this into position. And we have completed our project. So thank you for watching our video today. If you need any additional support or you need literature, go to ghouls.com and enter the information in the search bar.